There's a lot of new struggling insurance agents that watch our stuff, mm -hmm. and you've been extremely successful. But you also have a way, well, from what I've seen, of communicating to those new and struggling agents as well as anybody, by the way. Okay? Thank you. So you guys that are on, keep watching, okay? And pay attention, take some notes. What are some things that um, you would share with somebody that isn't quite Galen Hendricks yet, but they believe in themselves and they know they can be one day? You know, I wasn't built overnight. You know, I uh, it took me a while to figure out what I really wanted to do. You know, for the longest, I thought I wanted to just run an insurance company. I wanted to be the COO. And then it was, you know, shortly in my career, I figured out that I really enjoyed marketing and mm -hmm. I enjoyed sales and I enjoyed sales people. And I figured out, uh, I had a mentor in this business who said, I think you do both. Mm. And I, I asked him one day, I said, do you think that's kind of like the rooster watching the hen house, you know? Yeah. And he was like, it probably is, but it'll teach you a lot of things. And, and it's kind of like you're running your own business. Yeah. And so I really figured out how to balance those two. And I figured out fairly quickly that I really love helping people. And so what I always encourage new agents to do is smile when you're on that phone. Smile. If you're a belly to belly agent, smile because you don't know so what people just went through right before you got there. It's true. And I think the greatest thing about being a salesperson is we get to actually be happy. Yes. There's not a lot of jobs out there that you actually get to be happy. You know, happy is a verb in our world where happy is a noun. And mm. if you're in a role that you don't get to be happy. And I think when salespeople appreciate operations people, you know, and operations people appreciate salespeople, yeah. it creates a camaraderie that everybody's supportive. And it doesn't mean they get along every single day. It doesn't mean one doesn't think one's not doing whatever. So if you're that new agent, what I would encourage you first is get to know your carriers. You know, get to know what their rules and policies and procedures are. Get to know that person that's handling your business. And make that person realize that you don't wanna keep making the same mistakes you know, you want to be better and they'll start encouraging you. And the more you're encouraged, it's kind of like that blessed to be a blessing. The more you're encouraged, the more you encourage. And I think that overall attitude is great. Now that sounds so cliche. So how do you do that? Well, one is you've got to start being successful. The only thing that makes you happy as a salesperson is to make sales. That's right. So you have to figure out how to get that done. So you have to listen to your people, you know, your bosses, the people that are encouraging you. You need to listen to them. If you keep doing it the same old way, you're going to keep getting the same old results. Right. And the same old goose egg is going to create negativity. Mm -hmm. So find somebody that you want to be like, that you want to emulate, and take up their habits. You know, that that's kind of what I did. I watched people that I wanted to be like. And yes. so two of those instrumental people, I only got to meet one of them. And it was during a Sunday school class. So my dad, as y'all know, most of some of you have watched this and seen before, is that he handed me two books because I didn't have very good instructors when I first started in sales because the, the guy that ran our organization, I don't think he saw in me initially what he saw in me later. Mm. So that's another thing y'all need to remember. Just because somebody doesn't see you in it, see that in you right now, don't give up. Right. They'll see it in you eventually if you have the motivation and the drive. So keep trucking. Yes. Okay. I know that's a 70s thing, but keep on. I like it. But I think what you need to do is, you know, find that person. And Zig Ziglar and Norman Vincent Peale, my dad handed me two books. Uh, I brought both those books to MedicareCon, yes, you know, right. and right. I gave those away. And I signed those books and I took pleasure signing those books. But Norman Vincent Peale, I didn't get to meet, but I will tell you what, a book he wrote in 1963, the year I was born, is more relative today 
than I think it was when he wrote it. Mm. And it's about being the optimistic mind in a realistic world. And, you know, one of the things that I'm going to give you all a little tip on, I'm going to talk to you guys at 8% Nation about how to be extraordinary in ordinary times. Mm. You know, we're in a very ordinary time. People think it's a different time for our world. It's not. Our world has gone through these changes over That's and right. over and over. And guess what? People survived them. People thrived in those times. It's you need really to be true. a thriver, not a survivor. You know, most people are going to tell you you need to survive. I'm going to tell you you need to thrive. Mm. You know, it's time to thrive. It's time to stand out. Yes. And so when you read Norman Vincent Peale, you just can't help but get excited. Zig Ziglar. You know, I got to meet him. Uh, he was teaching Sunday school at, I believe it's Prestonwood Baptist Church. Zig and, uh, Ziglar was teaching uh -huh. Sunday school. Every Sunday. Are you every kidding Sunday. me? No, every Sunday. What? And I got invited to go by a friend. She goes, I think we can just walk in. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sure we'll have to Wait, have where a ticket. Wait, where at? I think it's Prestonwood Baptist Church. Somebody can check. That was in, that's in Texas? Uh-huh. And so wow. we walk in and he's teaching Sunday school. And I am just like... Starstruck. I'm getting goosebumps I know. right now. I love him. And I tell all new people, read See You at the Top. Mm -hmm. Believe you're going to be at the top. No matter if you are in ops, yeah. if you're in sales, if you are the janitor right now. That's right. Be the best janitor you can be. You know, your guy telling the story today in the sales meeting. Steve, yeah. Oh my gosh, I was trying to guess who the person was and I was thinking about the guy that started Sun Records and I was thinking about the guy that started this and it ended up being Simon Cowell. Yeah. You know, most people would not tell you that Simon Cowell started that way. Most of them will tell you he landed a gig by being a smart A or whatever. Right, exactly. But he didn't. He worked hard to get there. And he deserves our respect. That's another thriver. That's it. And I think one of the things that we've all gotten so hooked on is just how to survive. Yeah. That's the bottom of the barrel, y'all. That's right. Set your goals higher. Be a thriver. And that's probably something we're going to start doing, Cody. We need to that's brand right. that right down do. today. I we just do. thought about it. I we do. I kidded with your people. I'm Dr. Seuss. But, you know, in order to survive, I think you have to thrive. And so I want to see all of you young agents do that. I you know, that. hey, follow me on Queen of the Bundle. If there's anything I can do to help you, that's, right. that's one of the things that I think the women need to focus on. Bundle sell. Yes. You can package sell better than anybody because you can talk about cancer. You can talk about short-term recovery care. You know, you can talk about products that other people are like, oh, I don't need that product. I got these renewals. I don't need anything else. You know what? Those guys one day mm -hmm. are going to wake up just like they do to me today and go, how did you get there? Well, because when you weren't looking and you were comfortable sitting on your bank account over there, I was working my tail off. That's and right. that's how I passed you to the finish line. Hmm. That's your goal. That's it. Get to the finish line. I want to go back to what you're saying a few minutes ago, too. Um, it kind of seemed it kind of tied back to me when you talk about survive, thriving versus surviving. Mm -hmm. I really believe a lot of that's it's, it's a decision, it's a mindset, it's it it's a it's a belief, it's a confidence, mm -hmm. and I really see most a lot of agents in our in our business, at least ninety two percent, struggle with personal confidence. Mm -hmm. I'd love for you to speak on that because that's that's like you have a lot of personal confidence. You see a lot of other successful people. They have a lot of personal confidence. Yeah, they've had plenty of wins yeah. to build up their confidence along the way. Some agents are going out there; they're getting goose eggs every day, mm -hmm. and that's not that the, they're not get, they're not seeing wins, which is it's only going to detract from their personal confidence. It really takes people back when I tell them at my first job that I had no confidence. I had very low self esteem. It's so hard to believe seeing you now. Mm -hmm. I, I I had a mentor. Um, I, you know, I wanted to go to college like everybody else, and it still blows everybody away that I don't have a college education. But, you know, I don't have to look wow. much further than Sam Walton or some people up the street here in Nebraska True. that are pretty daggum famous. But I will tell you that I had a mentor. Her name was Twyla Offill. Uh, when I first started working for her, her name was Twyla Folsom. 
She ended up marrying a guy that I went to school with's daughter. I mean, a daughter, his, okay, start over. Jennifer Offill's dad uh, ended up marrying Twyla and ended up being the love of her life. Mm. But it was interesting. Uh, she hired me at 17 and she said, you're gonna be awesome. And I was like, okay, she goes, but Galen, I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't care if you cuss, but I do not ever wanna hear you use the word can't. Mm. If I hear you use the word can't, bad news. So I got rid of that word very quick in my vocabulary. Um, and one day I was struggling with some stuff and she goes, hey, maybe you ought to seek out counseling. I was like, not crazy, yeah, right. you know? And she goes, no, 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 I want you to seek out counseling. And I know the United Way works on, works on budgets. I wasn't making much money, you know, and I was living on bologna and cheese and the occasional $7 happy hour. That's how I ate dinner, you know. Did you fry it or just eat it? Hey, or? I just ate it because, you know. I still don't mind some bologna every now and then. And I did not like bologna as a kid, but you know when you're broke and want to prove yeah. something, you'll you'll make sacrifices. That's right. And I think making those sacrifices early on in my life is what created the confidence and created the want to in me. Mm. But I went to counseling and it was interesting. Uh, this counselor said, what do you want to do in life? That was the first session. It's a good question. And I said, well, I didn't know that you were going to ask me that. And he goes, well, but what do you want to do? He goes, I've asked you now. Yeah. The question's out of the bag. And I said, well, I wanted to be a lawyer, but I'm not going to go to college. So that's out of the bag. And he goes, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, my dad wants to be in the insurance business. I don't want to be in the insurance business. <laughs> and he said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be great. And I don't feel like I have greatness in me. Mm. And he goes, okay, well, then that's what we're going to work on. And I was with that counselor for about a year. And, you know, and it, I won't say I was like a superstar overnight, but I got lots of promotions at the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. It was the only newspaper for miles around. And um, I just was encouraged to be as great as I could be there. But I was also that employee, y'all, that I got taught to about every other Friday. Galen, I need yeah. you to be quiet. Galen, I don't need you to talk to your neighbor. Galen, I need you to be more productive. Galen, Galen, Galen. And I would cry every Friday. I don't see you. I don't see that oh, meshing well with, with Galen Andrews. I would Andrews. cry every Friday and I would come back in on Monday determined to not have to get back in there another Friday. Hmm. And when I left the Avalanche Journal, it was the most crazy thing that they did for me. They built me this scrapbook and everybody took a picture and they wrote quotes down under their picture that they heard me say <laughs> every other day. And I treasured that scrapbook. That's awesome. And it, it set me on the right path. It was like, I never ever questioned being great again because I knew if I could make it there, I could make it just about anywhere I went. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. You generate a ton of inbound leads from social media, from Facebook, mm -hmm. organically. Okay. Like referrals friggin' galore. Mm -hmm. You are the king.